Awesome. So, uh, well, thank you very much. Hey, what an incredible presentation, uh, the previous speakers. Uh, man, I want to bring this home tonight, and I want to give you some uh, some nuggets to take home. But I want to, um, more importantly, talk to you about something that is very near and dear to, I think, all of us. Um, and I don't think there's any single person in Xperia that's on tonight that's uh, part of this event uh, today, tomorrow, the next day, and for the rest of your lives that this will uh, – uh, there's not one person here that this won't affect. And so, um, you know, my topic this evening, I was going to make sure it's working here, Jamie, just to uh, make sure we got this slide working. Okay, one second. Let's make sure it's working. There we go. I want to talk about your journey to executive director and your journey to success. And I truly believe it all starts with this. It starts with your self-image. And, uh, you know, it's how you view yourself because you can't out-earn your self-image. And everyone says that, you know, when you look at people wanting to be successful, who doesn't want to be successful? Anyone here want to be successful? In the chat box, go ahead and put in the chat box right now if you want to be successful. If that's you, but I want to be successful. Just write in the chat box right now. Engage with me for the next 30 minutes here, and I'll promise you I'm going to change your life tonight. So, of course, everybody wants this. They, they want the lifestyle. They want the vacations. They want the fun. They want the low stress and no stress. And so everybody wants this. And so when you look at... Um, getting your promotion who doesn't want to get from beginner position to senior financial associate then go into sales manager and then of course who doesn't want to get into the next promotion levels everybody wants this right it's just the carrot's so great we dangle this carrot and everybody wants this carrot they want to go for it and so they're all excited and they want to get these titles and now jamie threw on the shares as well and so so many incentives so many reasons for you to want to be excited to want to build, to want to go recruit some good people, to want to share this story, to learn, to study, to train, to get your license. So many great motivating things. And then you got legacy. Oh my gosh, and this can't get any better. I'm so excited. I'm so pumped up and fired up. And so the issue though, what stops you from getting it? So everyone goes away from this two, two and a half, three day event, and they're so excited. But what happens, right? What happens is you go back, to your self-image. You go back to going, well, that was a great event. I was all pumped up, but then I realized it's me. It's the person that I am. And I don't know if that's really for me because, you know, I this my life has been like this and things haven't really worked out for me. And, you know, I thought I could be somebody, but, you know, I think I'm just maybe kidding myself and maybe I should just quit. And I don't know if I can get that exam because, you know, my life has been this and my self-image looks like this. So I want to help you today change forever how you think about yourself. I think by the time you get your insides figured out, the outsides will take care of itself. And I think it's so much more important to understand who you are inside than it is about the external motivating factors, okay? So if you ever felt this way, I felt like a loser. I was a loser at 31. I was a total loser, totally broke, living in my brother's basement suite for free and living off them for free. And they had five kids. They weren't well off. And I, and I couldn't even afford to put my, if I would, if I wouldn't have family in town, I would have been on the street at 31. So we've all felt like losers at one point or another. We've all felt left out. You know, some of us weren't the best in sports at school. Some of us weren't the best body shapes and the best athletes. So you weren't the first picked off the line. You know, it can be cruel as a kid, as a kid, right? That can affect your self-esteem. That can affect your self-image for the rest of your life. You know, maybe some of you are still looking for the special person and it hasn't happened yet. So that can really affect your self-esteem. And maybe you had, uh, got, you, you lost a good job or got fired and, and you know, you, that affected you. And so we've all been beat up with our self-esteem. Some of you have the black cloud over your head or you, so you think. And so it's, it's okay, by the way. I lived that for a while. I was bullied as a kid. I had people pick on me at school, uh, not quite beat me up because my two brothers still were able to protect me, but stole my lunches, called me names, called me this and that. And, and uh, it ridiculed me in front of other people as a kid. And, uh, you know, I had to go through that as a, as a child. I, I really share, I rarely share that story. Maybe this like the third time I ever shared that, but, you know, uh, Frank was great to introduce his book to me. It's called uh, High Performance Habits. You need to step into your future you. You can't just sit there and keep thinking of the person you are today. You need to start stepping out of your comfort zone and step into the future you. What does a future you look like? What's a future you want to be? What do you truly want to become in your life? And so you've got to start believing and looking and thinking and having that vision today that, you know, we talked a little bit about today. Frank talked a little bit about it. Um, and, uh, you know, your future you. So you look at this, man. So when you start to raise your self-esteem, I want you right now, 
right now, each and every one of you to look at this screen and I want you to go, I can do that. Just say it. I can do it. Just say it. I can do it. We're saying it here in the office. I can do that. I can do that. Now, here's the problem. Right away, you go back to what? You go back to your self-image. Okay, I said it, but you know what, Darren? I didn't really mean it. I just said it because you told me to say it. I didn't really mean it. Okay, here's the cool thing. Keep saying it. Keep saying it. Keep repeating it. Just keep, it's almost like fooling your subconscious mind into believing you are going to build now. You're going to be a great recruiter. You're going to start closing sales. I've got a guy in my, my team, his name is Calvin Eric. Calvin had a record breaking month last my, month and I saw him break a barrier. We had another individual last month had a record breaking month, Marcel Siebel, a record breaking month for him of all time, of all of his career, same with Calvin. Some have been in the business for more than two to four to five years and they broke records last month because I believe we got through to their self-image. We worked on the self-image so deeply and so intensely. And once you get the inside figured out, your outside takes care of itself. So I want you from today on to believe you're worthy, that you can do this, that you have enough self-esteem. You know you've had successes in your past and you can do this. So here's the problem though. You go back from this event, motivation is only momentary. It's temporary. Some people come back for events like this and they actually come down worse than they were before the event because they go back to the self-esteem. I'm giving you permission today to dream again, to start believing like you did as a kid that you could do anything. Dream again, believe again, believe you can be more. And don't stop when those negative thoughts come in, take it like a weed in a garden and pluck that negative weed. The minute it comes to your mind, just pluck it out. It's gonna be uncomfortable at first. You can't just change your self-esteem overnight. I've been working on it for years. I will demonstrate and prove to you tonight. I've been working on this for 40 plus years of my life. And just in this last four to five years, I believe I finally figured it out. It only took me 40 years, okay? So if it's taken you a couple of years, it's okay. It could take you another five or 10, that's okay. I want you forever tonight to, to change your self image of yourself, to start putting, projecting yourself into your future self, okay? I love the title, Jamie, going back to the future. Yeah. I want you to go back to your future self. I said to Jamie, it's not back to the future. It's back to your future. Okay. This is going to be so powerful. So we keep acting consistently. By the way, I had to throw the ladies in there. You guys know the lion's is supposedly king of the jungle. Ladies, you'll be interested to know this. The, the female does all the hunting. Woo! Isn't that pretty cool? I mean, my wife chased me, right? I know how that works, right? <laughs> We have this battle going on. We're not really sure who's right, but she's right. I chased her. But anyways, but the ladies do all the hunting. That's what's pretty cool, ladies. So I want you to see yourself differently from tonight on. And just remember this presentation for the rest of your life. I know I can be more. I was told that I can have, the, I can control whatever self-image I want. I want you today and tonight, the rest of your life, to change your self-image of yourself. If you want to be a better mother, imagine yourself being a better mother. I'm going to do better. You'll start to change your habits by having a new self-image, but you'll go back again and you got to stretch again and go back again and stretch again. But here's a cool thing. When you take an elastic band, you stretch it as hard as you can without breaking it. It doesn't actually go back to the original size. Every time you keep pushing your self-image, it will push you to the next level. Why can't you be a top advisor? Why can't you know as much as George does? George, by the way, that's the first time I think I've ever seen you not be perfect. Um, but, but it's good to see your human brother. It's good to see you're like all of us. I thought you're a robot for a while, but uh, <laughs> awesome job, man. But listen, you know, we all go with what we think we are. That's what we fall back to. You know, I've seen some people actually have a bit of success and self-sabotage and fall back to their self-image because it was uncomfortable. It's okay to be uncomfortable. Write that down. It's okay to be uncomfortable. I want to tell you a story of someone that had a self-image problem. Listen, it, you look like that as a kid. I think you'd have a self-image problem too. I was Harry Potter's twin brother, baby. I had the Coke bottle glasses. I had the thick glasses. Um, this is me as a kid. My mom and dad are on the left. And I don't know what they were looking at. I think there might have been like a starship or a spider on the wall. But they're up looking at the stars or in the sky. But uh, that was a weird picture we took as kids. I was a young brother. I was actually a mistake. Uh, now, my mother never said that because my mother loved all of us kids. But I was a whoopsie. I wasn't supposed to have my mom actually had uh, her tubes tied. So they were done in two. And I was a miracle baby. I'm one of the billion that, that made it through. Right. So if you guys all think about this, everyone's a champion because you're one of a billion. Right. So so just know, you know, you can have, you know, when you look like that as a kid, I, 
a little bit of an inferiority complex, right? I was pre I was premature. I was the smallest child in my classes. I was the smallest kid in hockey for a while. And then I started, my body started to catch up. But for the longest time, I got picked on as a kid because I was a scrawny little, little kid and I was premature. I was a premature baby by six weeks. So that's why some of you know I have probably, I don't have the, you know, I'm not as smart as other people, right? Didn't really fully develop. But the cool thing was, so farming family, here's the thing. My, my, my family was all into farming. We were gung-ho. We were farmers. You know what? I hated farming. I hated farming. I never saw myself as a farmer. So my mom said to me something very powerful. She changed my self-image. She goes, you know what? You're a smart kid. Study hard, go to school, and get off the farm. That's all I needed to hear. I studied harder than I'd ever studied before because I changed my self-image that day. My mom said, why don't you go to school and go get a job and go in the big world and leave the farm? That's all I needed to hear. I changed my self-image that day to become a good student. I studied harder than I'd ever studied before. I changed my brain to becoming a good student and succeeded in school at a high level, but only because I set a goal. Our whole family was trap shooters. We were well known across Canada. My, my oldest brother was Canadian junior champion, was uh, heralded in all the papers and was supposed to go to the States. And my brother was a junior champion in Alberta and I was nothing. <laughs> I won the little Hardesty and the Lloyd Minister and the little small towns. I, I was not anything. So no, because the point is though, is that, you know, even though it was hard on me, I stuck with it, but then I just didn't want to trap shoot anymore, right? How many of you ever didn't want to keep playing something you're not good at because you just knew it was hurting your self-esteem and your image? And so, you know, again, it wasn't for me. And so we were a hockey family. My dad was a was a pro player. My dad played actually with Glenn Sather. They were best friends, and we got to go to the Oilers, hang out with them, have fun. My brother was WHL Junior A. Uh, not me. I was Junior B. <laughs> I was a Junior B player. I never could be as good as my dad, as good as my brother's. Or as good as all the other players, you know. So I was I was good in the local area, but as soon as I got into the higher levels, I started to realize I wasn't as good. And the crazy thing was, I did I tried, I tried really hard. So you can imagine, I you know. So I still play though today. You know what? I still play for the enjoyment of the game. I know I'm not a champion there, but you know I did the best I could, and that's all I could that do. With right? Yeah. So, wow. so I did get to meet Gretzky, and we're uh, we still stay in touch a little bit today, not as much. That's Gretzky's dad, but I'll, I'll tell that story in a little bit. But this book changed my life. I'm going to tell each and every one of you, you've got to, got to, got to read this book and read it numerous times. I have changed so many lives with this book over the last uh, 20, 30 years, but especially in the last four to five months, we dove into this book big time as a team. And I promise you it changed everyone's self-image. And so I started believing I could become more. I didn't let the past affect my future. And so, you know, while I was a teacher in Japan, this is when I, when I, um, I read that book. I read it on the train going to and from the schools. And I started reading. I was like, wow, this is so interesting. I started understanding about my self-image. I started understanding that I could do more and become more. And I started to believe I could become more. And I got this success mindset that said, Darren, it's okay. Just keep going. Just keep going. I want to tell you the rest of the story. You know, you have to keep believing in yourself. You have to keep going. In spite of all odds, in spite of all defeats, in spite of all failure, Failure doesn't define a person. It's what you do from the failure that defines you. Failure does not define a person. I realized that because of that book. Now, had I never read that book, I could have ended up being like a lot of people bitter about their whole life. Get to my 60s, 70s, 80s in nursing homes. You know, when my dad was uh, in his final year staying at the nursing home, um, I got to go there to hang out with people. And man, most of the men in there were miserable. And they weren't miserable because they're in pain and suffering and all this or you know, they're by themselves. They weren't miserable because of that. They were miserable because they felt they'd squandered their entire life and they never went after their goals and dreams because they got stuck to that self-image, that stupid thing of what's called a self-image and they never could go beyond that and they never chased down their goals and dreams. So I want to keep telling you the story. This is very crazy. I believed I could do anything and I tried almost everything to be successful. This is a crazy story and stories. The top left is a paintball business. I ran a, I ran a paintball business with the Canadian military near Wainwright, near Hardesty, Alberta, where I grew up. Um, I ran that business, wasn't successful. I sold it at a big loss. I had some fun, but it cost me money. It cost me some of my, my tuition for university. I tried to be, uh, I, I got into car sales. I actually did okay. I was like, wow, I, I did okay at it. So, yoo-hoo, a little success. My self-image expand by a little bit. Oh, maybe I'm good at sales. Maybe that's what I should do. 
I then um, went on to sell perfume. <laughs> That's a career move, hey? I sold perfume in university. Can you guys figure, can you believe that for a second? I sucked at it. I wasn't very good. I smelled good, but I didn't make any money. So I failed miserably at that. I, I didn't succeed. I tried to be a woo consultant, right? I didn't make any money doing that. Nobody wanted to consult with a guy. I didn't know what he, where he was going, what he was doing. I didn't have enough self-esteem to attract people to me to be a good consultant. So I didn't make money doing that. Um, I tried to be, um, I tried to do some network marketing in Japan while I was there. Didn't succeed at that either. You know, interesting, isn't it? I, oh, I got selected to be a teacher in Japan. Wow, like so many other people got that job, right? But I got to go and I was like, woo, a little success. So my self-esteem grew a little bit then as opposed to the other failures. And so I thought, wow, you know, I'm on my way. So I went to Japan. Uh, five years later, I came back from Japan, had a little, some successes there. And I thought, wow, I'll step into my family business. I failed at that. I did not want to be in the oil field business. I didn't like it. I saw what it was about. And I left after three months and it was very shameful because again, my family, I wasn't a farm kid and now I left the family business again. And I thought I was so kind of ashamed of it. And so instead I went on to do a business with my brother. And this is probably the greatest rise and failure of something outside of uh, there's one of the greatest ones in my life. We created, uh, we started a, a fuel saving technology company and uh, we started out kind of chintzy and small, then it got bigger, then it got bigger. And our biggest uh, client was Fountain Tire. And uh, long story short, uh, a year later, after having massive success and an offer to get bought out for over $6 million, we got hit with a Canadian government lawsuit. And I'll tell you the whole story in a minute. So in Japan, I had one success there. It wasn't a huge, huge one. It did some good sales, made some, you know, some royalties. But that small win boosted my self-esteem. And I want to tell you all this. If any of you have had success, if you've raised some, some kids and they're good kids today, if you've done some good schooling in the past, you've got a degree doing something, that's a win for you. That should build your self-esteem. You know, go back. Here's what I recommend for you. If you're struggling right now and you need help, go back to your wins. Look at the little things you did right and did well in your, in your, in your life. And if you raised some children or you got a degree or you had a good career doing something, go back to that and relive that. Relive that energy moment and let that energy fuel you again. Don't let the past stuff that, that the bad things have happened control your future. Remember, project yourself into your future self, okay? So take that win. But, you know, on top of that win, I came home broke, and I came home uh, broken health-wise. I, I had uh, cavities. My stomach was all messed up. I had all kinds of issues. I had ear problems. I, I picked up some viruses and some, uh, they call them, uh, uh, you get it from the sushi. It's uh, parasites. I was full of parasites. So for the next year and a half, I struggled health-wise. And uh, it took me a year and a half to get my health back. And uh, so, you know, again, I could have let myself go. So I'm sitting there thinking to myself, what the heck am I going to do? I just came back from Japan. I was broke again. I did that book, but, you know, I come back with nothing. I just left my family business. I started this fuel saving company and boom, a loss. I'm like, I just think I, this is where I know some people think the worst thing, right? Just get out of my life. I just, but you know what? The Think and Grow Rich book kept me going. It kept me believing. I don't know why. I just kept believing that that was my, my picture in the mirror. I just thought to myself, that damn it, that's me. I know I can do this. I have it in me. I just got to find something. And so this fuel saving technology deal, you'll be blown away. We signed a half a million dollar product deal just before we were going bankrupt. Signed the deal with Fountain Tire. About eight, 10 months later, got a cease and desist letter from the government. We went through a five-year court lawsuit with them. No wrongdoing. We ended up paying a $25,000 penny, but it wiped us out. This is where my $116,000 of credit card that came from that I talk about to all of you all the time. That's where it came from. We tried to save the company, save the business. We paid back all the shareholders. Not one person in our company lost any money. That's called integrity, by the way. And uh, we left that business, but I took all that debt with me. I took the last few dollars um, and we fought them like crazy. Like how could Fountain Tire, a multi-billion dollar company, put their claim and credibility behind us but the government has a right to shut us down. And all of our customers wanted to battle with us, but it took us five years. And we just said, you know, enough's enough. It was crazy. My brother did most of the fighting there. He's a brilliant guy. But again, I thought to myself, what is my self-image? Another failure, another failure, another failure, another failure. Maybe I should just give up and go back and get a job. That was what I was thinking. Some of you I know have been there. So watch this. This is crazy. That Think and Grow Rich book just stayed with me. I read it again, another time. And I said, I can do this. There's got to be something. So guess what I did? I started a Boosters franchise. 
worst store in all of Calgary. <laughs> a year later, we got robbed through uh, the whole story is in here. Um, so I went there, did that. I did. I tried an MLM selling tax uh, stuff, tax advice. There is a good network marketing company selling tax advice. What the heck do I know about tax advice? Well, the guy that bought this became my trainer at my, at my bigger success. And I had a great, great career at my, at my first financial company, World Financial Group. And I had an incredible career there over nine years, did extremely well. So finally, finally, I thought, this is it. I've arrived. And then in 2011, I started uh, seeing what I thought was some big change in the company and some integrity issues with the company and with my upline at that time. I'm still forever grateful for what he and his wife did for me, but I decided to sell that business. And maybe looking back, you know, you could easily say, oh, you know, I shouldn't have done that, this and that, but I had to make a decision. It was either, it was either take the integrity road or not and stay where I knew it wasn't where I wanted to be. And so we made a decision to sell. Well, guess what? We tried another business in the States and uh, consulted to a network marketing company. That company's out of business today. I kept my financial firm, so I had a little bit of success there. I kept that company going. And uh, for those of you that know the funny story, of course, they said that I started this company to compete with Xperia. Uh, but people don't know I use this company. I use this company so I can write off my taxes. Yeah. Um, but here's the other one. I got involved with a water technology business in India. And we put uh, most of our life savings, 80% of our life savings into this company. That company today barely exists. We lost everything. So from great success to a colossal failure. So you got to be wondering. And then we, we bumbled around for the next three or four years. That company went out of business in 14. And then I tried MLM after MLM after MLM after MLM, after MLM with Steph and I. Failed, 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 failed. Some of you might be thinking at this point, Darren, you should just like forget about it. <laughs> you should probably just pack your bags and go live on the street somewhere. Because like, at, like look at how many, I mean, this is a teacher's report card. I've got two out of 20 here. Like I am like, I'm like 20% right now. You know, I did all these. Jamie, I didn't meet you in Visalis, but I was in Visalis with my wife. So you might be sitting there going, what the hell are you thinking? You have no right to think you're a lion in the jungle because you did nothing but fail, fail, fail. Success, then fail, fail. It was like I self-sabotaged myself. I could never really maintain success. So in all this, though, you might be thinking to yourself, all that network marketing stuff, Darren, you're, you're crazy, man. What a waste of time, right? No way. Are you kidding me? Man, I learned about taxes. I learned how to smell better. I learned how to clean a house safely. I learned how to lose weight and lose money. I learned how about mud soap in the Dead Sea. It was awesome. I learned about skincare, baby. That's why I look so young. I didn't waste my time. I got all that. So self-image, right? Take the positives. Stop dwelling on the negatives. Look at the positives. You ask me anything about mud soap in the Dead Sea, I got an answer for you. You know how many minerals there are in the mud in the Dead Sea? Over 22, baby. I know that's valuable information. You all want to know that tonight, right? You ask me about it, cleaning your house with, with clean products. I can tell you all about it, right? Come on, this is good stuff. You guys, I expect you guys to be pitting me all the dirt. I need to know about the Dead Sea. I want to look young too, and I'll give you all the details, right? What's the moral of the story? Learn from the past, apply it to your future. Yeah. Failure is only temporary. Failure is only temporary. You got to keep going. Again, you're going to doubt yourself all the time. Keep believing in your self-esteem. Keep feeding your self-image. Keep looking at yourself as a champion. Keep believing you can get to that next promotion. Keep believing you can pass the next exam. Keep believing you can get your license. Keep believing you can become a drawer. You can become an Andrew. You can become a champion. And keep believing in yourself because you've all had some mini wins. You've all had some wins in your life. You're freaking here tonight. That's a win. That's a win. Build on your successes. Build on your past. You have those good stories. Who cares about the other stuff? So, you know, in 2003 or 2012, we had a great run. We did. We really changed our lives here. And thank God we put some money away and did some things because look at this. Isn't this cool? Here's the funny thing. I could never be in the NHL, but I could hang around with the NHL. I got to be in the Oilers dressing room when they won their Stanley Cup back in, I think it was 84, 85. I got to hang out, drank out of the cup, hang out with Gretzky, McSorley, Anderson, 
the Anderson Brothers, party with the Anderson Brothers in Penticton. So I live my NHL dream vicariously. See, you don't have to just get there for sure, like to actually get there, but you can live it vicariously. So I learned how to use the wealth we built and the good times we had, the money we made to do some of the fun stuff, but I still get to hang out with some of the superstars. <laughs> now, one good thing that came out of Argentina, we actually went to Argentina for new skin, if you can believe it. My wife and I went there to open up New Skin with a whole bunch of people. It was a colossal failure. 30,000 bucks later, we had lost everything and didn't have any income to show for it. But we, I got to engage my sweetheart in Argentina. So guess what? Man, I wasn't just a lion. I was roaring like a lion, baby. I was roaring. I was on the top of the hill. Woo! Roar! I got her, baby. She's mine. Right? So I was on top of that mountain, roaring like a lion, like acting like the Lion King, right? We just got to get her a little Pumbaa, right? That's the yeah. next step, right? Yeah, get her a little Lion King, Lion King. So in 2012 was two monumental things that changed our lives forever, which led us to Xperia. We sold the business in WFG. By the way, all the jokesters out there and the, and the fools and the idiots and the liars all said that we were this and that. You can't sell your code in that company if you had any issues and all that. So they're just using it, by the way, to try to tarnish the good name, uh, our good name and our brand and try to, try to bash Xperia that we did this or that. You can't sell your business, you know, when you're there, if you had any issues. So we know what we did. We know what we stood for. So I got to marry my sweetheart. And now it's not just me, baby. Woo! Now there's two of us. Yeah. Now there's two hunters on the street and there's two of us. And that was a partnership made in heaven for me. And it's, it's changed my life forever because now there's two of us battling together. So if you are couples in the business, you can battle differently. You don't have to be doing the exact same thing and all licensed. You know, Tarek and Sophia, like different people, Terry and, and Steve. And you know, we've got so many couples that work the business, you know, Baljeet and Pam and, you know, lots of different couples in this whole company and business. So you don't have to necessarily be couples doing it, but it's nice if you do and you have it. So thankfully my wife is here with me and we're doing it together. So I want to tell you this story because this is where we put uh, uh, almost 80% of our, our life savings into a company we never should have invested in. It was the wrong people, the wrong partners, the wrong thing, and we should have never done it. But I had a vision and a dream because my, my self-image was that we can keep going, just keep blasting and keep doing wonderful things. That entire company took every bit of money from us and almost bankrupted us. You can imagine the feeling in my stomach. You could imagine the, the pit. The, the empty pit, it, it literally, I felt like it ripped the soul out of my, out of my body because I've been here before. I was at this exact stage in 2002 when I got into this industry because I'd lost everything back then. Can you imagine 10 years later, almost losing everything again? You know, some of you think that I'm this and that, and I can talk so well and I can do all these things. It's because I failed, failed, failed. Daniel Crete said it today, I failed forward. I felt forward many, many times. I just never gave up on my self-image. I just kept believing that I could become more, that I could become something. I never give up. Remember this, doubt and fear will steal more of your dreams than any failure. Failure doesn't steal your dream, just the doubt and the fear to not try again, to not go for it again, to not do it again. And I want to have Stephanie come up and just share with you a little bit because this will tie in uh, some of our story. And uh, 2014, I'll be honest, when we lost everything in that water deal, we were literally on our knees at that point. Thank God we had put some assets aside. We had had some other things we did, but this was a blur. We were totally in survival mode in 2012. Literally everything we could sell, everything we could salvage, everything we could do, it was life or death for us. And we had to now make some crazy decisions. And I'll have Steph just tell me that story about what happened next. I just about let my license go. Yep. I was a month away from two years unlicensed. And then you last. And then I'd have to write the exam again. I said, I'll, I won't write the exam again. I had to rush to get my license pushed through last minute with AIC. I got it within two days of expiration. Mm -hmm. wow. I kept my license, and that was a life changing decision for the rest of our lives. I'll have to step, tell crazy. the rest of the story. Now, let's just say that when we got rock bottom, I learned how to sell a lot of stuff. I got really good on Kijiji oh my God. and Marketplace. She sold everything. I'm a queen at this. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, I'll teach She you. bought and sold stuff. She'd buy I stuff and like, sell it to good. make us money. It was crazy. Right? Wow. But anyways, you all the, do. yeah, got to do what you got to do. But you know, all the stories that Darren told me, I mean, mm -hmm. told you, my story was not that colorful, but I went through it with him. 
uh, since 2012 or so, and we went through eight, I was with him through eight of these adventures. <laughs> Out of these eight, the 20s yes, that he talked yes. about, I was in eight of those, and seven, I would never call it the failure. Seven of them are not failures, they're just oh. lessons learned, yeah. right? Lessons, the only time that you would ever fail is if you never get back up. That's yeah. the only time that you will fail. So these are just lessons learned. And uh, so Darren talked about Argentina. We lost that much money, but I th think about it. You know, you, you might not lose that kind of money, but you lost time. You probably lost a lot of time with your families or valuable things that you can do, but it's, it's just amazing. And I had to have right notes because then I will definitely forget what I'm gonna say. Um, but while Darren was doing his raise up, raising capital, I didn't know he hated it. I seen it. He called one after another after another and trying to get them to invest into something. And while he was doing that, I had to go to work. I, ha I had to go find a job. I mean, you look at us, we're like, we're, we're perfect, right? No, we always had, we had this, all these backgrounds that, you know, uh, lessons learned, not failures. And uh, I had to go get a job and had to work for somebody. And that is when I realized, I'm like, I hate working for somebody. I'm not a good employee. I don't like people telling me what to do. Yeah. I want to control my own time. Who likes that, right? Yeah, yeah. And that's why we are here. Yeah. And so I thought about it and we still never gave up. I was like, Darren believed in this. Like he, he still believes in, in this and he just never quit. He just kept going and going. And because he had such a high self image, uh -huh. it kind of just rubbed against me. Like he gave it to me. And I, I sometimes rub her more than other times, but it <laughs> just depends on the mood. I'm sorry. <laughs> Her, Kitty, her. <laughs> but his 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 belief was what drives me, and your belief is what will drive your people. Yeah. And so I didn't get, I didn't stop believing in him. I just said, let's go, let's go. And when times like Shoot that, when it was when you're down at your bottom, and, and I know some of you who are watching, you're probably experiencing the same. But the thing is that if you have someone standing beside you, being there for you, mm -hmm. nothing matters. Yeah. And so I just wanted to share that. And, it, and then we still never quit because you know why? Because I'm like, well, if we quit, we're going to quit on ourselves, you and I. We're going to quit on, imagine for yourself. If you're going to quit, you imagine all the saying that you told your kids that we're going to go to Disneyland because we're going to work hard at this. You're quitting on that. And then if you're talking to your sp spouse and you're like, I'm going to retire you. And if you quit, you're quitting on that. So I really want you to think about what you're quitting on. You're not just quitting on yourself, but you're quitting on everyone that is you're affecting on you. around you that you that they're relying on you so at the end of the day that's what i wanted to share is that we never quit do not quit and so i just you know what at this convention is amazing because the next three days the next two days actually just soak it up and um you know what, what would they call it the um the roadie here uh success leaves clues right you're in this business and people are sharing with you successful people that have been there and they're sharing with you everything they got where can you be that people will share with you everything that they got so if you follow the steps hey you can't fail right you can't fail if you follow their steps so i just want to share that um i hope that was that was awesome that was awesome wow. Woo! Woo! so here's a crazy story i want, I want to go into this uh we packed up our car we bought a uh, oh, yeah. kia hybrid <laughs> we packed up uh, we packed up our entire life we left Canada. We drove to California with a dream to go make millions of dollars doing some fundraising for these companies and pharmaceuticals and the cannabis companies. And we raised money for VC capital. We were doing all this stuff, acting like a big wig with a small little self image, trying to be a big image, small little image, trying to be a big image and believing we could do more. And so we load up our car, drove to the States, what the heck we were doing, rented a little place, in uh in their laguna beach and we went and worked for this uh company as a consultant we we're mostly doing it here i was selling policies over the internet back then to canada to still pay the bills that were from the debts and the losses we'd had i was trying to keep the wolves off the off the door so we could keep going so i'm i'm sitting there in this little laguna beach by the way we were overrun with ants we had ants coming in our home we woke up uh, with ants in our bed ants all over the house they had to fumigate the house. It was a horrible experience. We left a tuberone bar uh, in the cupboard and the ants found it. And they brought thousands of friends into our house. And uh, it was a horrible experience. I'm thinking to myself, this was rock bottom. I'm living with ants 
and we're in, in another place trying to survive. We're, I'm selling policies online to Canada, trying to make money. Marcel, you know, you referred me to the guy. We did a we did a, a neat deal there to get some money going. We did whatever it took to survive because we were in survival mode. See, some of you have never had to go through that. So when you when you make excuses, you tell me you can't do this and oh, it's tough on me and oh, boo-hoo, poor me. Man, live my life for a while. You, you'll know what pain is. You'll know what suffering is. I mean, it's not a boo-hoo, but sometimes you got to take a look at what you really had to go through. If you haven't lived on, near on the street, you don't know what pain is. And some of you maybe have. And so we were that close twice to being on the street. And so don't make excuses. And so we said to ourselves, oh, my God, this is freaking driving me nuts. We've got to do something, babe. We've got to probably go back into financial services. It's what I know. It's what I trust. It's a good business. It never steered us wrong. And so I start talking to my good friend, Bupinder Chima, and I thank him to this day, and I will for the rest of my life, that he encouraged me and I encouraged him because we've both been through a similar story with the previous company. And uh, I went back to that self-image. I said, what if? He helped me to believe again, and I think I helped him to believe again. And we said, let's start planning. 2015 has started. I got back home in 16. I called Bupinder. I said, Bupinder, let's do this. Let's build it. Let's go do something. Oh, I'm in India. What the hell are you doing in India? Get back to Canada. He goes, oh, I'm not coming back for like six, seven months. I'm like, oh, geez. So I had to go do something else. And then he come back to Canada. And then I was busy doing some fundraising. Well, I'm too busy. We can't do it right now. So 16 kind of went by. In 17, we said, let's really do something. Let's really do something. So the rest, as you know, is kind of history. We had that fateful meeting in March of 2018. A three-hour meeting turned into three days in a row. We actually got invited Jamie and Lance home the last day to have dinner with them and their family. That's how much trust and, and respect we had developed over those few days together. We didn't know each other. I'm in their home with Bupinder having dinner. And so when you look at this story and when we met them, they raised our self-image. Jamie Prickett said something to me. I will never forget, Jamie. He said to me, we, he was explaining his whole system to us. Leanne kicked him under the table, kicked him under the table. And he looks like, what, what? It's what? Good luck trying to duplicate what we did. I think it was planned. I think it was planned. I think they did that on purpose. That said to me that this guy is going to go there no matter what. His self-image to go and create a billion-dollar company was back then when I first met him, and it's even stronger today, and that raised my self-image. So see, as leaders, by the way, it's very important. You raise the self-image of all of your people. The number one thing you can do as a leader, bar none, is encourage your people and help them raise their self-image to a higher level all the time. It's not a once a week thing, by the way, it's an all the time thing because I had to keep doing it all the time or I would have quit on myself and on my wife and on our life. Okay. So uh, it turns out that this guy came into our business, uh, but Pinter and I said, let's do it. Uh, I said, but Pinter, let's, let's just go for it. We'll partner up. We'll conquer the country. And he took the East. I took the West and we, away we went. He moved to Toronto. I was in Alberta and boom, we started exploring. Met this awesome guy in Calgary, Ankar Guman. Ankar brought a whole swack of amazing people from, uh, geez, it was Ramel and Edna and Justine and Shabu and gosh, I mean, uh, Nilima. Nilima and all these amazing leaders. And all of a sudden, boom, Calgary took off. And so then it led to the amazing awards that this whole team helped create. Then it led to these amazing people here. Then it led to all these amazing people and Justine and all these leaders that now have six figure rings. Can you believe that? From all the failure, from all the bankruptcy, the, the near bankruptcy being wiped out not once but twice, failing at almost every MLM I ever tried, failing at almost everything I ever did, and kept failing and failing and failing forward until finally it hit again. Like some would call that luck, right? Some would call that luck. Yeah. Tenacity, fortitude, mental toughness, all those great words you read about in the books. I just kept believing and believing and believing. I kept thinking to grow rich and thinking to grow rich. Then I start doing and doing and believing. I kept going. And all these people, I pour into them my heart because I know there's even more in these people than there is than they believe. And that's what great leaders have to do. You have to pour into people and build their self-esteem and their self-image. And so, again, you don't have to question. For the rest of your life, you don't have to question your self-image because you now know that you've had past successes that you could build on today and keep going and just keep believing and keep striving and keep doing and keep doing the work. And so I'll give you a list here. Um, so what did you guys learn today? I'll give you a list of, of things you need to do. But what did you learn today? Darren's a failure. That's what you learned today. 
<laughs> no. no, that's not what you learned today. What you learned today, what did you really learn? Failure is only temporary. Yeah. It's only temporary, right? So what do you now know? You control your self-image. Yeah. You control your self-image, which is the internal intrinsic motivation that no matter what pump, pumping motivation comes from the outside, yeah, if you can't get that, that self-image and intrinsically start to realize who you can be, and you start you start projecting your future self, like Brennan Bouchard says, Frank's great, great uh, mentor, one of his great mentors, right? And Frank, you thank you, th thank you for that book, Frank. So here's the thing, write this down quickly or take a picture. Don't let these things hold you back, your past self-image. Your past self-image is your past. It does not dictate your future unless you let it. If you give it power, it will take over you. Don't give your past any power. God, stop talking about your past failures. Talk about it as a learning experience. Talk about it as a, as a, as a, a temporary a success story, right? So it's all part of your success. Your past failures don't matter. They're teachers in disguise. Yeah. Yeah. Other people's opinions. Who gives a rats? You know what? Nobody's going to take care of you in retirement. Those complainers and whiners and jokers online. You know, Drew, I remember when you called me, those guys were attacking you and attacking you. And uh, I said, dude, just stand your ground, bro. Just give it right back at them. You know, and all these people out there attacking Xperia, maybe attacking some of you that left your company. Who cares? There'll be toilet paper in the next few days. It's, uh, it's uh, you know, today's news is, is tomorrow's toilet paper. Tomorrow's bird, bird cage uh, poop catchers, right? Like, who cares what they say? So don't worry about what people's opinions are. Uh, limited beliefs. Don't get held back by limited beliefs. That's also crushing your self-esteem. So don't limit your belief. Don't limit your belief in yourself. Project onto yourself the future. Think of getting the ring. Think of getting that SM uh, sales manager title. Think of getting that ED title. Think of getting the next level. Think of winning the shares this year. Why not? Jamie always says, why not? Number five, don't let your past relationships hold you back. Let it go. Oh my God, if you need help for it, go get help then. If you're still living in the past in a past situation relationship, go get help for it. Get it cleaned up. Move on, right? Just move on from the past. Don't let that stuff drag you down. It's too easy to let it drag you down. Money can drag you down. I was dead broke. Dead broke when I got in this industry in 2002. 116,000 in credit card debt. And I still got my license. I fought through it. And, uh, and we made things happen. So don't let money be the factor that holds you back. You'll figure it out. Go get a second job, go get a third job, whatever you gotta do, go do it. Just do it, raise your self-esteem, raise your, your level of play. So you are your self-esteem. So where was your self-image and your self-image created? From all your past. Maybe it was your parents were crappy to you. Maybe you school, maybe it was a, your experience, your failures, successes, your upbringing, your peers, other influences in books, all that affect your self-image. So going forward, you're going to set a new goal for who you are want, want to be next. That's why we set goals, by the way. That's why you start projecting your future self. And so back to the future was so awesome. Back to your future. It tied in perfectly with my speech. So goals of who and where you want to be. I, that's why goals are always about the next step, what you're going to become by the end of the year, right? And then activity, you're going to put the activity and you're still going to have successes and failures. So you're still going to be dealing with the self-image. Just know this now. You are all now in control of your self-image. You have the God-given ability to control your future right now because you now know your self-image is all in your control now. Whatever you feed your self-image, whatever you tell yourself is going to come true. Be kind to yourself. Be grateful. Right? One of the great things to help you uh, um, get your self-esteem is have an attitude of gratitude. What are you grateful for? Grateful for your family, your children, your grandkids. What are you grateful for? You're grateful for the kids you have. You're grateful for the business you have. You're grateful for the life we have, for the for the country we have. Yeah, I know there's lots of crap going on. I stopped listening to all the crap. I don't care what's happening with Trump. I don't care. What, I mean, frankly, I don't care for Trudeau at all. I don't care what they're doing for our, with our country, but that's just my opinion, and you can hold me against it. If I start tweeting, I'll probably get kicked off Twitter because now they control our freedom of speech, right? So it's just ridiculous what's going on right now. You, you actually, there's no sense really worrying about that stuff because it's unless you're going to go run for prime minister, you're better to focus on you. Focus on building your self-esteem today. Grow your self-esteem today, tonight, tomorrow, the next day. Keep working on it. Faith sees the invisible, believes the unbelievable, and receives the impossible. Have faith in yourself. Have faith in you again and again and again and again and then again and again tomorrow and again the next day and again next week, the next month. Have faith in you. Believe in yourself again. 
Why not? You control your self-image. It's up to you to, to make that faith happen. It's not that you have to find the answers. I have so many people, oh, I'm searching for myself. What the hell are you talking about? You're right there. Go look in the mirror. Touch your nose. You're right there. We need to figure things out. I gotta find myself. What the hell are you talking about? You're right. You just you know, put your arms around yourself. You just found yourself. If you can't find yourself, ask your wife, hey, where am I? <laughs> You're right there. Well, I gotta figure some things out. What do you gotta figure out? What do you want to become? What's your next step? What's your goal? What, well, I don't know what I want to become. What do you love doing? Well, I want to build this business. Then go do it. Well, I know, but I just don't know if I can. Why do you say you can't? Why don't you think you can? Well, I've had this. It doesn't matter what the past. Project on your future self, okay? So step into your future self. As Brendan Bouchard said, start seeing yourself as that champion, that person you want to become, that promotion you want to get, that leader you can be, and start thinking that way. So what do you have to do? This is the question. And I need to give you about eight things you can start doing in our business right now to start changing this. Because why shouldn't that be you? That's Nalima and Eric. Uh, they're now, uh, that's uh, his, well, that's her fiance and that's his fiance. Yeah, they're both fiancés uh, of each other. So um, uh, Stephanie's in their wedding party. We're so grateful and thankful to be there. But that could be you. Just imagine that's you on stage eating a puck. Just do it. Just put yourself there and see yourself getting your SM promotion on stage. See yourself getting the plaques. Why do you think we give out 300 plus plaques and trophies and certificates to people? Because they can go, holy crap, I got something. It's a small win. It's a small win. I don't care if you're 25 and you still got a piece of paper. You still got a piece of paper. There's hundreds that didn't, but you got it. So congratulations. Start projecting yourself. Here's the steps. Number one, set a new self-image. Keep building upon it. You must keep building upon it every day, every week, every month as we did. We never gave up, although we could have so many times. We never gave up on ourselves. I don't know. I'm just wired differently. I just cannot give up. I could not go bankrupt. I could not do that. I just had to fight. I Maybe I should have without much debt. It would have been a lot easier, but I just couldn't do it. I had to fight. And so keep building your self-image. And so uh, how do you do that? Well, attend all the training. The people that missed this training are actually the ones that needed it the most. Yeah. And they didn't show up. I, you know, we... As a team, we rallied around. We call, I called personally called a whole bunch of people and asked them to be on this. I personally called and made sure they were attending. I made sure they were registered. If they're registered, I called and made sure they're coming on. We got five new people in the last 12 hours to commit to being here. Five new people registered off our just our agency. If every executive director would have gone on the phone and called more people tonight, what I would do, and tomorrow I'd be on everybody I can and try to get more people on this. So when you attend the training, what happens is you start building your skills that build your confidence, that raises your self-esteem. Okay. So that's why you have to come to all the training. Number three, reading great books. It fuels your mind and your self-image. Man, I'm, I'm just devouring books right now because it's raising my self-image again to the next level. I can't go become a million dollar earner and experiment with a 200,000, 300,000, 500,000 dollar mindset. So I have to raise my game continuously to get to the next level. So I'm reading more books today than I've ever read before. And I love it. It's just helping me so much. Set realistic goals. The thinking of rich, when you set goals, it creates a vision. Remember, project your future self. You are an executive director. You are a sales manager. You are a six-figure earner here. Look at Drawer. He could have quit probably so many times. He never, never quit. And frankly, I, I think he's an amazing guy. You know, if he pissed Frank off, that's good. Then Frank gets distracted and we, we just keep building bigger business, right? Hey, Jor, keep distracting Frank. It's good for real. So I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Frank's going, yeah, you bugger. We were just talking today. We were talking two or three times today. We were joking around. We love driving each other, baby. Cause you know what? When I drive Frank, he drives me and together we raise the whole tie. That's how we feel. I love that guy. I love Frank and Yolanda. They're amazing people. Got to know them so much more in the last couple of years. It's been amazing. But again, I love it because we set these goals. And so Jor, congrats on your success for all of you on your successes because you guys never quit. And that's the key to success long-term. Number five, surround yourself with top leaders who lift you up. Surround yourself with top leaders who lift you up. Um, it's so important to hang out. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm on the phone with all of our leaders on a constant basis. Uh, some much more than others because some are really, really independent and, and don't really need much or, or much help or advice sometimes. I stay out of their business. I mean, uh, they're good at what they do and I don't need to, you know, uh, be a control freak. Uh, so I let them run their businesses and um, and they do it very, very well. And when I say let, it's their business. I'm not letting them. They're just doing it. 
I'm just saying that, you know, I just stand back and watch good people run their businesses, but surround yourself with those top leaders who lift you up. Why is it important leaders? Why is it important to encourage, praise, and recognize people? What is it doing? It's doing what? When you encourage and praise and recognize people, what's it doing for their self-image? Build, build them up. You cannot out-earn, write this down, you cannot out-earn your self-image. You must project upon yourself a new self-image, a higher one. Number six, do the activity. You must do the activity. You can't just think it. you got to do it. Think and grow, which is only part of it. In the book, though, it tells you it's all about activity. So when you start thinking, what a man thinketh, the man can achieve it. When a woman thinketh, the woman can achieve it, right? So again, it goes hand in hand. you got to do the activity. Number seven, prospecting everywhere you go all the time. I'm going to tell you, if you're not prospecting everywhere you go, Mario, great training, man. Love you, brother. You're just so awesome giving and sharing of so much valuable knowledge. That would take most people a year to two years to learn all that stuff you just shared literally in like 20 minutes or less or 10 minutes. Crazy, brother. Everywhere you go, you prospect because you never know. It was just said tonight. Who was it that was saying that? Um, prospect everywhere you go. You never know who you're going to meet, right? And Mario said that on his training. You never know who you're going to bump into. And if you don't talk to them, somebody else will. Number eight, fight like hell to win. You got to grind it out. You got to grind it out. You got to fight like hell to win. There is no second place in life. You either get there or you don't get there, right? I don't want you to be that grumpy old person in the senior's home because you failed. You went in the ground with the music still in you. I want you to be that person that's damn excited about your life. Look back and look at what we did. You know, we had so many record-breaking months. You know, you know, in January, this agency, our direct agency, and I'm going to brag for a moment. Just please let me self-brag on this one just for a moment for a reason. We had a record-breaking month of our entire career as an agency. How is that even possible? I believed it for 40 years. I had a self-image for 40 years so that one month of my entire friggin' life, I could say we broke a record in our agency. But you know what's more important? The, uh, the Vons, the Cathy's, the Calvins, the Marcells, Margaret's and all the other Matthews and, and uh, Arturo's all those people and there's a lot more of you that put in business had some of their best months ever along the way see that was what was more important Darlin had some great stuff uh all these leaders that and I'm just naming numbers of people that I know quickly but I forgot one or two of you it's not because I, I wanted to forget but the point is they all had their best months ever that leads to a combined best month ever how do you do that self-image I believe the reason we had a record-breaking month is I raised the self-image of all those people, all those people on the team. You need to do that as a leader all the time. So I'll just uh, say a couple more things. I want to dedicate this to uh, to my father uh, who passed away last year. I still haven't even posted about this. I haven't even talked about it. I haven't went even on social media and said a word about it yet. A lot of people know my dad passed away. He was a very special person in my life, but I want dad you to know that you didn't raise a failure. You did not raise a failure. You raised a champion. Um, and uh, I love him to uh, till his final days. I was there with my dad as he passed away when he breathed his last breath. Uh, there was only one of us allowed in the hospital. We rushed back from Victoria, BC, from our property. My mom said, You better get here. Your dad's passing quickly. We drove like a bat out of hell to get to the hospital. I literally went in there. Steffi let me go. I ran in and I sat with my dad for his last breath of his entire life. And uh, I just want to say how grateful I am that my dad believed in me. My dad encouraged me. My dad taught me. My dad uh, believed in what I could do. My mom also believed in me. And uh, there's one more person, too, that changed my life. It's this woman right here who, um, yeah, who stands by my side no matter what happened to us. Come on. Who followed me. Who stuck by me. Who kept there. <laughs> believed in me and believed in what we were believed in. Baby, I love you. I love you. Thank you so much. Uh, we, we sometimes get tired, guys. Listen, I talk to Frank and Morrow sometimes, and man, we get tired as leaders sometimes. It's not an easy business, but it's so worth it. It's so worth it. If you start believing again, dreaming again, lifting yourself up again, and having some of these great experiences and sharing those great experiences with your family, with your kids, with your future kids, you know, whatever that's going to be. And, you know, it's, it's amazing when you look at it. So see yourself as you truly are. I want you to go through these next two days. And go, man, am I glad I was here. And I want you to let some people know that are not on this tonight. And by the way, if you go into the, the chat box and you put the at mark and you type in the person's name, you can see if they're on or not, right? So you put the A mark and you put in, you know, the name Steve or the name Bill or whatever. 
their name will come up if they're on or not. If they didn't get on tonight, you got to tell them they got to be on tomorrow. And I hope they get to see this in a recording. But um, go win, make a difference, enjoy the journey. And uh, there's a lot more to this. So when you guys get these slides, there's a whole thing in here about how to raise your self-image. It's amazing. It's part of my presentation. I'm not going to cover it tonight. But I want you to know I put a whole bunch of extra slides in here for you at the end of this. So you could really understand how to win, how to grow, how to think. And so please, I'll end with this. Life is too short to wake up in the morning with regrets. So love the people who treat you right. Forgive the ones who don't. And believe that everything happens for a reason. You are here for a reason. God put you on this planet for a reason. Don't squander it. If you get the chance, take it. You got a chance here. Take it. If it changed your life, let it. Nobody said it'd be easy. They didn't promise... Uh, no one said it would be easy. They just promised it would be worth it. So from Dr. Seuss himself with that, thank you all very much. Have an awesome night. And we'll see you all tomorrow.